Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. The way to overcome negative thoughts and destructive emotions is to develop opposing positive emotions that are stronger and more powerful. That's the Dalai Lama reminding us of the power of our attitude, our attitude for gratitude, positive thinking, positive living, and of course, thankfulness. Welcome to Inspired Living Radio. I am your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful, amazing planet of ours. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's live show. We're going to be uh, spending the next hour talking about the power of gratitude. We're going to be talking about thankfulness, and we're going to be talking also about complaining and how complaining can actually rewire the brain that causes more anxiety and depression. And it's going to be a fun show, and I'm doing this in in honor of those in the United States that are celebrating Thanksgiving, a day of being thankful, thankful for friends, thankful for family, thankful for coworkers, thankful for being alive, thankful for having food on your table or a roof over your head. Uh, It's all a, a, a day of thankfulness. So I just want to say thank you. Sit back for the next uh, 45 minutes or so as we go on an exploration and do some spiritual prospecting for spiritual transformation, spiritual healing, and of course, your own spiritual goal. I will be taking live callers today. So if you want to call in and just share a little bit about what you're grateful for, uh, what you are thankful for, uh, maybe some of the the journeys and the struggles you've gone through to get to this place of positive living, uh, give us a call at 202 570 7057. That is the Ohm Times radio call in line. Uh, my producer Chris will put you into the waiting room until we get can bring you in uh, based on where we're at on the show. But let's move into the what I like to say the magic of the moment. And if you will, just take a deep breath with me. Breathe in, in gratitude. Breathe in, in thankfulness. Exhaling positive thoughts. This is Inspired Living Radio, and we do like to say, be inspired, inspire others, inspire before we expire, and of course, you are the inspired and the inspiration. So again, if you want to call in, we'll be opening the phone lines here in just a little bit, 202-570-7057. If you want to work with me directly, I'm located here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of Seattle, Washington. Just go to marklanehart.com. You can also do an internet search for the Intuitive Prospector. I promise you I will pull up on whatever internet browser you are using, and you can uh, schedule everything right from my site. You can also get uh, past podcasts of Inspired Living Radio. We've been in uh, four plus seasons of Inspired Living Radio. And you may have noticed that the intro is a little bit different. Uh, We've changed up the show format. I won't be broadcasting every week, but I'll be broadcasting every other Wisdom Wednesday, uh, the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month, just due to travel and due to 2020 changes, and and we're we're moving into a new decade. So we're going to be doing a lot more teaching and a lot more traveling and a lot more transforming, but I'll still be on the air with you uh, at least every two weeks for Inspired Living Radio. And like I I said, it's your Wisdom Wednesday to... um, you know, collect thoughts and guidance and education and wisdom. And we're going to have some amazing guests coming up. We're in the process of scheduling those guests right now. So uh, pay attention to our Facebook page, which is called Inspired Living Radio. You can follow us on our Facebook page. You can also post questions there. Uh, We will bring your questions live to air. And we also are over on Twitter and Instagram. Those are our three social media sites. And if you follow us over on Twitter or Instagram, look for the handle inspired for us. That is the number four. So inspired for us on both Twitter and Instagram. Love to have you get on the spiritual journey with me and do a little spiritual prospecting. Again, if you want to um, 
visit my site at marklanehart.com. You can get all the links there. You can also find me every Monday morning uh, over on my Facebook page, The Intuitive Prospector, for live metaphysical mocha Mondays, followed by The Healing Cafe. Uh, the first half of the show is 30 minutes of inspiration, uh, guidance for the week, get you started off on your Monday morning with a cup of coffee, followed by The Healing Cafe, which is direct spiritual conversations, chats, readings. Uh, this last week, we had a lot of people from all around the world. It was exciting. Had some mediumship readings that I did for uh, two um, two of my follower, followers that followed the show, both on Facebook and YouTube. And it was a lot of fun to bring their uh, father through and um, a husband uh, and make that connection, or what I say, celebrations of life after death. So today we're going to be talking about gratitude and if you do miss this live show, if you're listening live, we love it. Thank you so much. If you miss the live show, no sweat. We've got you covered with our podcast. Uh, all the podcasts are, are archived over at Ohm Times uh, Radio Archives. You can also find us through uh, Podbean, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. I have some of my favorite shows and links over at marklaneheart.com, and those stream uh, for forever, so you can always catch those uh, podcasts uh, if you want to you know, check out a show. And again, you can also catch me over on Alexa and Echo, uh, if you have an Alexa or Echo pod, um, you just ask to open up Positive Living, and I start streaming through your Alexa. It's kind of cool, actually. It's still kind of weird. I'm still trying to get used to that. Um, but get on my YouTube channel as well, Soul Adventures, uh, over 300 plus videos, Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. Uh, Inspired Living Radio, four plus seasons of Inspired Living Radio with amazing topics and guests, spiritual hikes, some dives, uh, what I like to say, spiritual awesomeness, all uh, gathered right there in my Soul Adventures library. So let's talk about gratitude real quick. I started off the show with a quote from the Dalai Lama because I found in finding the pathways to gratitude, finding the pathways to positive living, your attitude is so important when it comes to your life and how you see yourself in the world and, and the vibration and the uh, energy you give off. As a numerologist, we've uh, done exercises where we actually add up the letters um, with numbers. And the one word that always scores 100% out of all the words that we have in our vocabulary that adds up to over 100% is attitude. So if you take the alphabet and you do A as one, B as two, C as three, and you take those numbers all the way out through the end of the alphabet up to Z, and then you apply those numbers based on the letters that are in that word. There's some other words that come close. Gratitude is in the 90 percentile. Uh, positivity is in the uh, upper 80s uh, percentile. But then you, you write the word attitude out, and it, it actually adds up to 100. And a lot of words don't get to that 100 percent. And we always you know, measure based on you know, human consciousness, 0 to 100 percent. And so you know, it really does start with your attitude, something that I, I became aware of over a decade ago as we get ready to go into 2020, which is a new decade. What better time than to prepare the decade with preparing your mind, preparing for positive thoughts? Um, you know, yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. It's always based on a choice. Uh, Lyndon Johnson, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, uh, former president, talked about that. Uh, that you know, it's it's your choice. It's ours to win or lose. And you know, it's that old saying that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is the gift. That is why we refer to it as the present. And you noticed I said take a deep breath at the beginning of the uh, the show to move into the magic of the moment. So it changes your auric field. It changes your thought patterns. Breath distracts the mind, and it allows you to be more open to receive today's message. Uh, whether it's my radio show, whether it's doing a one-on-one -on -one reading, whether it's doing a public event, it's all about your attitude, and it's all about what you're open to receive. And again, the Dalai Lama was very clear, and this is something I read on in my um, my early spiritual pathways after going through much trauma and tragedy. The way to overcome negative thoughts and destructive emotions is to develop opposing positive emotions that are stronger and more powerful. And that's where we get into gratitude. That's where we get into attitude. That's what we get into being thankful. That's where we get into giving feels good. That's where we get into carp diem, which is seize the day. Uh, you know, some if you're if you're struggling with your journey right now, whether you're spiritual, religious, non-spiritual, um, atheist, uh, agnostic, all of the above, it still applies to the human consciousness because a lot of us are built the same way. I don't know anybody that really walks backwards, and I don't know anybody that really walks sideways in my life. Not to say that people aren't out there that walk sideways or walk backwards, but a lot of us are built the same. And what makes us 
in this, you know, this biological, what I call this biological flesh suit, we actually have more in common uh, a lot of times if we just take the time to, uh, you know, be open and civil and have conversation and communications without a lot of ego. Um, now, we always try to define ourselves, you know, and make ourselves authentic, whether it's through how we look, whether it's tattoos or piercings or the clothes that we wear. But a lot of us still have the same cellular makeup. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody's, anybody else's blood that's a different color. Uh, everybody's blood is, is the color of red. The heart chamber works exactly the same way for everybody. So at the cellular, at the metaphysical, at the physics level, we're all built the same. And when you start thinking about your thoughts and when you start thinking about energy and vibrations and frequency, and you realize that the universe connects to you in those aspects, it doesn't connect to you in English or Latin or Spanish or Italian or Japanese, it actually res it registers with you on on a vibration, just very much similar to your iPhone uh, or your Droid or your smartphone, whatever phone you have. Without frequency, without energy, without power, energy, those don't work. And we're very much the same way. So, you know, I really had um, a really negative thought process when I was, uh, you know, witnessing, uh, you know, my, my brother's five murder trials. He had he had five people that were involved with his murder. And so you talk about negativity and, and you know, wanting to move into being positive. And it was going through those five murder trials that really um, opened me up to really start thinking differently. And we're going to be going to our first break here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to go, so, go over eight things that you should give up. Uh, eight things, and I use the number eight because eight for me is uh, the infinity number. Uh, as a numerologist, I'm actually a life path eight, which is about uh, pathways in, pathways out. And there's, if there's eight things that we can start off with to help you on your journey today, uh, is to give some things up that don't help your path, that don't help your health, don't help your relationships, and definitely don't help the many roads of life that are presented to us and the challenges that come with that. With that. Um, you know, a lot of times my mentor would teach me that the problems that we face are irrelevant. It really is about your attitude and how you face and react to the issues and problems that come into your path. So if you think about all the problems that you faced in your journey, and I know everybody's had them, including myself, they really are irrelevant because it's about how you react. You can be the victim, you could be the martyr, you could take it head on, uh, you could go into isolation, uh, you could, um, you know, do something to make a change. For me, going through those ne those negative, dark days of the soul, I made a choice to move into being a spiritual teacher, to being a life coach, to being a medium and a psychic, and to help people out, to be a light in the world that is a lot of times dark, in the darkness that I went through, moving into having my spiritual practice here in Seattle, moving into four plus seasons of inspired living radio, where every week we, we give messages that inspire and, and you know create thought and consciousness and bring people together. And what better way to do that in today's society. We need that more than ever. We can, you know, people coming together to be kind, caring, compassionate, civility, communications. I always say, you know, um, with what I, you know, whether it comes to religion or politics, people, you know, uh, know that I'm a medium or a spiritualist. And I say, really, the difference between the two of religion and spiritualism is religion is following the messengers. For me, spiritualism is all about following the message directly. And, you know, Every religion has a different story, but at the same time, they all have a uniqueness and, a, and they resonate to be the same story uh, along some some way, some form, some some story that'll tie in together. They're they're very similar. Just is it's based on where you 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 are raised in the world, how you're socially conditioned, and what your belief systems are, how you were raised. So one of the things that I went into was the eight things to give up. First, start doubting, give up doubting yourself. You don't need to doubt yourself. And we are our worst critic. Uh, we One person we talk to the most is ourselves. So watch that self-sabotage. Give up negative thinking. Give up fear of failure. I teach this in my group. I've got an online development group, spiritual development group called SDG. And I'm always reminding them, fail often, fail big. Because failure for me is first attempt in learning. And we're all here to learn. That's what the LIFE acronym means for me. Learn it from experience. So... Give up fear of failure, first attempt in learning. Give up criticizing yourself and others. Remember, for every finger that points out, there's three fingers pointing back at us. So I've, I've never forgotten that. And I always remind myself when I'm pointing like, you, 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 there's those three fingers pointing right back at me. So it's like me saying, no, it's me, me, me. Uh, so get up, give up criticizing yourself and others. 
give up negative self-talk. That's huge. Your words become your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your behavior. Your behavior then leads you into your habits, and your habits usually lead you to your current life reality and your um, destiny, if you will. So it all starts with the power of words, criticizing yourself and others, and negative self-talk. Uh, we have that right now in society, whether through it's, uh, the news outlets, the social media outlets, uh, within our um, politics, it's very negative self-talk and negative self-thinking. And so if you find yourself in that environment, uh, whether it's at work or whether it's uh, with a friend in a social setting, move away from that or move into a more positive way of speaking and a more positive way of uh, saying things because misery does love company. Uh, give up procrastination. Uh, procrastination usually leads down uh, this molehill of things that just continue to build up and then finally you're, you're just overloaded because you've been cr procrastinating and then it leads to negative thinking. Give up fear of success. Success is is great. Always focus on the good things that are coming your way, not the bad things. And give up people pleasing. That is, is so, that's one of my lessons that I had to learn. It's taken me 40 plus years to learn that. You know, there's that old saying, try to please the world, you end up satisfying no one. And when you move into your authentic self and you start to get away from negative things and you start to give up th uh, negative things like doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing yourself and others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and people-pleasing, boy, you start to open up into a whole new world of uh, abundance and healthiness. And when we come back from our break, we're going to continue to talk about uh, the uh, inspiration and the gratitude and thankfulness as we, uh, we come into the day before Thanksgiving. And uh, you're listening to Inspired Living Radio. We'll be back here in two minutes on the OM Times Radio Network. Be inspired. Inspire others. Inspire before we expire. We'll be back in two. future of internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. DCP. 
Hey everyone, welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. We have a new uh, show content for you moving forward into 2020. I'm your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Going to be here Wisdom Wednesdays uh, every other week. So the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, we'll be back for Inspired Living Radio as we move into our fifth season and a new decade in 2020. So I'm looking forward to uh, exploring and discovering through body, mind, and spirit as spiritual prospectors for 2020. And 2020 2020, guys, is going to be a, a fantastic year. It's the year of the four in numerology, and it's got a lot of twos in it, which is about peace. It's also about moving forward and fixes, fixing and focusing on things that need fixing and things that need focusing. So I'll have an article coming out here uh, in uh, December. I uh, look forward to that and uh, some predictions on what 2020 is going to look like from a psychic prediction. Uh, very similar to what I did in January of 2019, talking about the year of the three, which is also known as numerologists, called a universal year. We're big things happen. And if you want to go to my Intuitive Prospector Facebook page, I've got some of the most mind-boggling uh, discoveries that were made in 2019 from science to space to transportation to energy to uh, nanoscience to artificial intelligence to taking a picture of our first black hole and changing theory into facts. Things that we've always said were science fictions are becoming science facts. So uh, check that out on my Intuitive Prospector page over on Facebook and make sure to subscribe like and also get on the page so you can uh, get notifications when I'm live for my show. So uh, before the break, I was just talking about the negative thoughts and the negative things that we do as we, we move into thankfulness of Thanksgiving and ha having an attitude for gratitude. What I always remind people, um, you know, even just opening your eyes at the start of the day, it, you should be grateful for that because, you know, on average, there's about 50,000 people a day that move into the spirit world that, that die and uh, don't wake up and never open their eyes again. So every time I wake up in the morning, I'm very grateful, one, because my eyes opened and I'm still here, so that means I'm still supposed to be learning and getting out in carp diem and seizing the day, if you will. You know, I've, I've had a few friends, um, you know, um, that weren't very old. Um, one of my mentors, she was 63, went to sleep and she never woke up. And that's always kind of stuck with me. So gratitude starts from the moment your eyes open. Gratitude starts from the moment your eyes open. That means that you're here to learn and to grow and to transform. And all the, you know, the lessons aren't always easy. Sometimes they're hard, but your choice of how you respond to them, it's all up to you. So tell the negative committee that meets inside your head to sit down and shut up even from the beginning of the day. And what I like to do to help to remind, I like to have reminders and I like to have mantras the mantras that I, I work with, it just depends on what, I, what I'm feeling. You know, I've got a bunch of different mantras. Uh, some are my own, some that I've taken from other people that are famous. Uh, some are actors, some are spiritual gurus, uh, some are my mentors. And I just trigger my words based off the mantras. It helps quiet the negative, self-sabotaging monkey mind that we all have. Remember, we're, we're all built very similar. We just uh, do different things in life and we may have different skin tone or skin. Uh, different eyes or different hair, but when it's when we get down to the shell of it and we go internally, uh, you know we're all the same. And it's you know it's it's that old saying is um, the cover is not the book, if you will. And when I wake up, I start with what I call the Grateful Eight. Now I've been doing this for over a decade, and for me the Grateful Eight is eight things that I'm thankful for when I wake up. It starts the tone, it starts the vibration, it starts that ripple effect. Regardless of what's going to come at me in life, and I guarantee you there's going to be things that come at you uh, in life, uh, but those eight things, it could be you know little things that you don't think about. Thankful for your eyes. Thank you. Thank you uh, for my elbows that I actually have an arm that bends. You know, I think about my niece, uh, Sarah, uh, who has had cerebral palsy her entire life, and she's 30. And she's never been able to walk. She's never been able to get out of a wheelchair. Uh, you know, for those of you that um, have been impacted and know cerebral palsy or have a family member or yourself, you know that it's like gravity of the planet a thousand times more than what we feel. And so it's very hard to move with cerebral palsy. And, you know, when I'm feeling down, I go back and think on my niece because those are things that I take for granted. Walking, moving my arms, having an elbow that lets my arm move, uh, ha having ears to hear 
having clean drinking water. Uh, you know, there's places around the planet right now where people are literally fighting over water as a resource. Uh, you know, thankful that uh, I have a planet to awaken to and make a difference. No, how small that is, the difference starts with us and that ripple out that ripples out into the world uh, as a humanitarian, uh, you know, very conscious of um, the human consciousness and our planet. And, you know, just eight things that you want to create, eight things that you're thankful for, your your family, your friends, your pets, your your loved one, uh, your house. I mean, the, you can just each day find something to be grateful for. And I call it the Grateful Eight. And I was kind of, it was funny because a few years ago, uh, Quentin Tarantino came out with a movie called The Hateful Eight, which was completely opposite of everything that I'm talking about. So I thought that was funny and I really didn't like the movie, just uh, just FYI. And I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan. You either love him or hate him. That wasn't really one of my favorite movies. And I just have always laughed that it was The Hateful Eight because I do The Grateful Eight. So one of my mantras um, that... Um, that I like to talk about is the one from um, Will Smith, and I'll get to that just a second here. Um, and like I said, you know, starting out, we started with a little little uh, Dalai Lama talking about overcoming negative thoughts and destroying emotions, uh, destructive emotions that develop opposing positive emotions. And you're doing that by creating gratitude, having an attitude for gratitude, creating a, a grateful eight, not a hateful eight, telling the negative committee that meets in your mind to sit down and shut up. Uh, you know, these are all uh, things that you can do to start changing your mindset. And it's part of the spiritual path. We talk about it as spiritualists, uh, the transformation the uh, alchemy process and if you don't know alchemy just look up uh, alchemy which is the cellular makeup of something changing uh, based on its conditions and based on its uh, social interactions from an, in an external environment and so when you you know um, move into that arena when you move into that consciousness and you have mindfulness for gratitude and have an attitude for gratitude it really does ripple down to the cellular cellular levels of your body uh your health your mindset and then from there that ripples out into society uh and what you do how you treat people how you interact with people think of the one you know there was one person uh, that really comes to my mind and, and back in the days when i was in the u.s coast guard i'd been in the coast guard for eight years and there was one person always came to my mind that was just no matter what you said, the opposite was going to be true. And no matter what you said positively, you could expect that this person was going to respond with a negative context, a negative response. And, you know, I felt, I, I think of this person off because they're probably pretty alone. And you, I, you, you, you know who the people I'm talking about, they really don't have a lot of family or friends that are hurting on the inside. And they're usually pretty negative and they usually lash out and project and uh, transfer their emotions onto you. And, you know, you, you got to be mindful of that. So one of my mantras is from Will, Sp Will Smith that he'd said several years ago, uh, when um, uh, Independence Day was coming out. And he talked about stop letting people who do so little for you control so much of your mind, feelings, and emotions. Let me say that again. Stop letting people who do so little for you control so much of your mind, feelings, and emotions. And for me, you know, I used to just get ramped up. And my, my Mondays, Mocha Mondays, I talked about... Um, you know, a quote from Rumi, if you are constantly getting rubbed like a lamp, how are you going to be polished? How are you going to look if you are responding to every critique, every pundit, um, every opinion, every judgment? And, you know, successful, smart people move forward regardless. When they find their authentic self, they move forward without listening, uh, you know, to a lot of um, – people and people that chirp it's kind of like the eagle flying high and all the seagulls and crows are always picking at the eagle try to be the the eagle go high uh observe watch your words be mindful and again you know don't let people that do so little for you in your life control so much of your mind feelings and emotions and that's will smith that's one of my mantras that i use the other one when i wake up is uh, you know is my tagline that you may have heard in the commercial dare to dream Dare to explore, dare to live. It's my mantra that I came up with personally, but it's also a reminder for me to, to dare to dream, to go after my dreams, dare to explore. Uh, a lot of times, you know, fear is, fear for me is false evidence appearing real. And when you move into a fear-based energy, 
uh, it shuts you down in many different levels, metaphysically, uh, from a health standpoint, fear is created by humans. Uh, you know, there is real fear out there in the world, and I've experienced it many times, uh, you know, as a firefighter, as a retired firefighter, and as a uh, coastie for eight years, putting my life on the line and being called to other people's traumas and tragedies. However, those fear energies are usually fight, flight, or freeze from a psychological standpoint, and your body's going to do one of those three things, fight it, flee it, or freeze in it. And that is when real fear presents itself. But us as humans, because we are, you know, of consciousness and we think therefore we are, we have this blessing and curse of putting worry and drama and chaos and negative thinking into our mind, which then ripples it into your environment and your external world and how you interact. And it, it you know, it's it is a blessing and a curse because, you know, um, we're putting so much negative it reactions and fear into our lives that we don't need to so again tell that negative committee in your head to sit down and shut up you know willie nelson reminds us that once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones you'll start having positive results and that's very very true for me gratitude um starting with like i said with the opening of my eyes gratitude for me is perhaps the most important key to finding success and happiness in the modern day in my humble opinion i'm sure there would be somebody out there to disagree there's always going to be those people that no matter what you say they will disagree that's fine but for my experience in my life and going through a very dark time and journey of watching my brothers move into the spirit world my father my father-in-law my uncle my cousin uh, my own near-death experience all of those really put me here today talking to you on this live show or end or podcast if you're catching the podcast that gratitude is perhaps the most important key to finding success and happiness in this modern chaotic busy day of ours and again the attitude like i said with numerology you take the word attitude and you add up you add the, all the numbers up from a uh, uh, the alphabet it adds up to 100 not a lot of words uh, add up to 100 so it really is an attitude for gratitude knowing what we appreciate in life means knowing who we are what matters to us and what makes each day worthwhile that's why the, the i always say carp diem seize the day i uh, you know in my path of experience in as a professional firefighter uh as a professional uh first responder in the coast guard i saw so many things from you know car accidents to airplane crashes uh, to heart attacks, to suicide, and you just don't know what the day is going to bring. And so it's just a reminder that if we move into appreciation and we have thankfulness in our life right now, again, the magic in the moment, that's what matters to us to make each day worthwhile, make each day count, carp diem. Paying attention and having awareness to what we feel grateful for puts us in a positive frame of mind. It connects us to the world around us, to ourselves, and yes, even a world that is unseen with the physical eye. A lot of the work that I do as a psychic, as a spiritual medium, uh, as a metaphysical teacher is done based on what is not seen with the physical eye, but is what is felt uh, with the human body uh, as, you know, as an antenna. Very similar debates have raged throughout history. If you didn't see it with your physical eye, it didn't exist. We know that to not be true. Uh, if you, you know, some people, you know, unfortunately think the world is flat. Uh, but you know, if we kept thinking that way, we wouldn't have you know technology like the iPhone or my ability to talk to you here through this broadcast. And you know the telescope, the microscope, the dog whistle, frequencies, all of those discoveries over there the last 200, 300 years have really changed the dynamics of what we think. And you know, again, if there's a book out there. Uh, what we really don't know, um, you know, I read it early on in my in my spiritual journey, and there's just a lot, you know, I always remind people if we look out, you know, if you look out your window right now, and you see a tree moving, uh, you see the tree moving based on the wind, and you accept that verbatim for what it is, but you don't see the actual wind with your physical eye, but you still accept the facts that that tree is moving. So, you know, for me, when you move into um, that grateful, positive living uh, attitude for gratitude, thankfulness, it opens you up and it opens you up to a world that is unseen and felt through different senses. I, I like to say that gratify, gratify, gratitude defies, I took grat gratitude and defies and put it as gratifies. So I guess maybe that's a new word, gratifies, but gratitude defies easy classification and it has been conceptualized as an emotion, 
as an attitude, a moral virtue, a habit, a personality trait, or even a coping response. Like I said, I, I could have continued with everything that I went through with my brothers, the murder trial, the brain cancer, my father-in-law, the multiple sclerosis, all at the same time. I could have let the rest of my life be a pathway of negativity, but something inside me said, no, this is not the path. You need to learn from your story because your story is not who you become. It, it helps shape who you become, but it is not who you are. You have a choice of who you become. So again, if you want to call in, if you if you want to share something that you're grateful for, um, we're going to open the phone lines. We're going to get ready to go to our second break here, our final break. But if you want to call in, and just share something. Uh, I'm going to be doing this more and more. Uh, I'm going to be interacting with you more uh, with the phone lines and through some Facebook live shows on the Inspired Living radio page. So make sure to become one of our global Inspired listeners all around the globe. We started out with zero and we're well on our way to 1,100 Inspired listeners all around the planet. So make sure to get on that, that group page. At, you have to ask for... Um, uh, to join because it's not open to the public uh, just for the fact we get a lot of people that want to you know spam us and troll us and so uh, ask to join the Facebook page uh, the administrators will get you uh, uh, all signed in and welcomed to the Facebook page where you can ask questions and interact but in 2020 as we move into the new decade I'm going to have more interaction with the shows uh, more pre-shows and maybe even some post shows and including some meditations uh, as we move into 2020 to help you on your journey. So we'll be back. We're going to continue to talk about gratitude and attitude for gratitude, thankfulness, and you are listening to Inspired Living Radio with your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. of Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. Death Row Dogs Rescue is a 100% all-volunteer, no-kill rescue 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are run solely by volunteers who dedicate their time and resources for the past 30 years to rescuing homeless pets from the streets in Los Angeles and surrounding areas and from city and county animal shelters who are on death row often moments away from being euthanized. We provide housing, medical care, and training to these neglected, abused, and often severely injured animals. Donate now, save a life, and allow these beautiful dogs to experience a home life filled with love. All donations are greatly appreciated and are tax deductible. Please visit www.deathrowdogsrescue.com to see some of our amazing dogs who need homes. Do not breed or buy. Make adoption your first option. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. I'm your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, talking today's podcast live show, talking about attitude, talking about attitude for gratitude, thankfulness, being grateful, and talked a little bit about the negative aspects, but let's get into the positive aspects of what gratitude and being thankful as we approach uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. Like I said, cr gratitude is 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 defies easily into different classifications you know some call it an attitude i personally call it an attitude just from you know my emotions of of dealing with it uh some like to call it a habits i always say if you 
um, have an attitude for it and you create words constantly after 20, 30 days, when you are creatures of habit, it does become a habit. Uh, some, it's a personality trait. Um, and it's some, for some people, it's even a coping response from a psychological standpoint. But the word itself, I always like to look at words because, again, as we're communicating here, as a metaphysical teacher working with energy, frequency, vibration, uh, the laws of physics and, and what we think we know about physics, uh, you know, words do matter, but words are also a vibration. And as I'm talking to you today, the vibration off a muscle or my vocal cord is what allows my words to be heard and come into my reality. And we have, you know, a consciousness and, and um you know, intelligence to understand, to put syllables into words and then say those words so we can communicate with other uh, homo sapiens, which is, is supposed to mean wise. I sometimes scratch my head based on what we're doing to our planet uh, that we're not being very wise right now. Uh, but I like to look at words from the root level of where these words come from. And so the word, let's start with the word gratitude. The word gratitude is derived from the Latin root gratia. G-R-A-T-I-A, -A, gratia, meaning grace, graciousness, gratefulness. All the derivatives from this Latin root have to do with kindness, generousness, gifts, the beauty of giving and receiving or getting something for nothing. That's what the root word of gratitude really represents. That's the vibration it gives off. That's the energy that's associated with that word. And this goes back to Latin, one of the oldest, earliest languages um, you know, known to man. And so when we have these behaviors that we form and put into words, it's important to know what the root word really means. Uh, you know, it's just like today, I'm thinking in just modern society, the word politics, when you actually say the word politics to somebody, um, you know, with the diversity that we're seeing from the right, the left in the middle, the word politics root word actually means community. It's actually a word that means bringing people together, not tearing people apart. So, you know, if you want to, if you're curious about words and why we say the things that we do, get into root word cause analysis and what the root word means. And you'll be interested uh, to learn what some of these words actually mean and how they're applied in today's modern language. Um, you know, researchers, philosophers, poets, writers, spirit practitioners, and gurus have long speculated throughout history at many different locations around the planet, not just here in the United States, all around the planet, that gratitude does indeed possess happiness bestowing properties. Let me say that again. The word gratitude does indeed possess happiness bestowing properties when we use it in our lives. Now, it's, every, it's, it's everything in life. You use it or you lose it. So I'm hoping today's Inspired Living Radio broadcast is inspiring you to start using gratitude, grateful aid, attitude for gratitude, thankfulness, not just one day uh, out of the year for Thanksgiving, but every day for 365, 24-7, that you move into a place of being inspired, inspiring others, and of course, inspiring before we expire. Because for everybody listening to the show, we have two things in common, death and taxes. So really, we're just walking each other home. How do we want to walk each other home? Do we want to do that as a community, as a, uh, you know, um, as a friend, as a tribe, as a, um, uh, you know, a mentor or a guru? How do you want to walk each other home? And I, I, my hope is that we start coming together in 2020. Again, the year of the four is focusing and fixing and moving together to create a, a world um, better and leaving it for the next generations um, better than you know stewards of what we're doing right now. So here's some here's some tips to help you uh, for getting the, to this place of what I just called happiness bestowing properties when you use it in your life. It's an important mental health principle, you know, especially for today. Uh, the benefits of gratitude extend far beyond what we imagine in body, mind, and spirit. I mean, there's tons and tons of scientific studies and books written found on gratitude and how it's associated in many areas of our life. And when we use it in many areas of our life on a daily basis and we create these habits through our thoughts that become our words, we do start moving into greater happiness. We do start to have more optimism and positive emotions. We do start to have new and lasting relationships. You may even notice that your health 
improves. Uh, we, we found in studies that there's more progress towards personal goals and achievements when you move into that positive living, positive thinking behavior. Uh, you tend to have fewer aches and pains. Uh, I can totally relate to this one. I had so much back pain uh, from the grieving and the death and the dying and the murder trials, and it took years at the cellular level for me to finally be in a place. I should actually, I'm older, so I should actually be more sore, but I'm not. I'm actually less sore, and a lot of that was based on the energy of grieving and mourning and loss and love and understanding that if I continue to have an attitude that's negative, my cellular level, my vibration, my energy is going to respond to that and it creates more aches and pains. Uh, you may find that you're focused, uh, you may have more alertness or more awareness. I found this to be the truth when I moved into gratitude and an attitude for gratitude and being thankful uh, and giving. Uh, you know, I've, if you go to my Facebook page right now, uh, both on uh, Inspired Living Radio and um, my intuitive prospector page, I've got a, uh, you know, Mark's Giving Tuesday fundraiser for next Tuesday, uh, where, you know, I'm raising money for St. Jude's Hospital, Research Hospital. You know, this is where kids who are sick, again, I'm gratitude that I can wake up and, and not be sick today, but there are a lot of people out there, uh, especially children that are sick, and it helps to raise money for the St. Jude's Research Hospital. So if you're interested in doing that, you can always visit my page, The Intuitive Prospector or Inspired Living Radio. They're posted up there now. I like to do donations and charity events because it does at the you know at the end it's hashtag giving feels good and that's my part of my gratitude and giving back. Just like when I do my Mocha Mondays uh, on Monday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's to inspire. I don't charge. I don't take any money. And then I move into the Healing Cafe, which allows me to connect to people all around the planet and spend an hour or two of my time giving back and having a ripple effect that goes out that helps people know that there is life after death. Uh, know that they uh, can you know, show up every Monday for a cup of coffee and feel a little bit better. So um, I hope that you'll hang out with me one of these Mondays moving forward as we move into the next decade of 2020 every Monday morning the Intuitive Prospector page Metaphysical Mocha Mondays followed by the Healing Cafe so let's continue to talk about the power of gratitude I just gave you a whole bunch of things of when you're in you know gratitude it, the things that help better sleep you, you're more determined you have more self-esteem more confidence you know, with really no downsides or anything that can be measured negatively based on your energy, emotions, or thoughts to practicing more gratitude and thankfulness, it does seem like a goal that all of us as humans, especially today, should start to embrace this. We should start to practice this, and we should start to live this on a daily basis. So, again, we're talking about an attitude for gratitude. I'm just going to give you some uh, transformative quotes to help you think, food for thought. I'm just going to read through them. Again, if you have a question, uh, you can always call, whether it's this show or the next show, uh, the number to call is 202-570-7057. That is the Ohm Times radio call-in uh, line. My producer, Chris, will put you in the waiting room. If you have a question, uh, if you want to share something, I'm going to be interacting with our inspired listeners a little bit more uh, than we did in 2019. I'm not doing as many shows, so this gives me the opportunity to interact more uh, through my YouTube channel, my Facebook channel, and, of course, here on Ohm Times Radio. Uh, so give us a call if you have a question. Love to hear from you. Just say hi if you want. Um, and let's talk about some quotes, some mantras, if you will, that might help you on your journey. Now, the first one I'm going to start with is Zig Ziglar. Some of you know who Zig Ziglar is. If you don't know, I'm bringing him into your reality for the first time. Look him up. He talks about gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. So think about that. The more you express gratitude for what you have, and I'll be honest with you, I'm very blessed. I have a lot, probably more than I need. But he, he's saying that the, the more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. And I don't mean materialistic things. I mean physical, emotional, mental, materialistic, of course, and spiritual. Uh, I talk about the PEMS all the time. P-E-M-M-S as a reminder, as an acronym. Physical, emotional, mental, material, and spiritual. And he's saying, if I express gratitude, I'm going to even have more to be thankful for. How cool is that? Now, for those of you that follow my work, 
For those of you that have been uh, listening to the show uh, for a while, you know that I'm a huge Albert Einstein fan. Uh, the stuff that Albert Einstein talked about, some of his theories he predicted back in the early 1900s that have come to be true, whether it's uh, talking about theory of relativity, uh, black holes, uh, gravitational waves, things that we, he was talking about, I'm almost convinced that he may not even been from this planet, so or he may, he may have time traveled or something, because he just was so amazing in the things that he thought about, but the things that he wrote and shared, because he wasn't part of academic uh, background. He actually came from a very uh, standard, low-income way of life and really stood up to those that were uh, in academic professions, writing papers where it really... F you know, fluffed a lot of feathers. And one is one he talks about as far as gratitude. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. And that was Albert Einstein who said that. So let me say that again. There are two ways to live your life. And it, it applies to everything. If you think about, you know, life and death, uh, night and day, um, light and darkness, uh, red or black, um, you know, it, it really is two ways to live your life, positive or negative. But one is though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. Albert Einstein reminds us of that. And so I hope that helps. I hope that resonates. I hope that, uh, you know, um, that these quotes, these mantras, you know, Maya Angelou, who, and, uh, you know, another person I followed for years, she talked about, you know, when it comes to gratitude, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. And it's that for me is such a reminder because we wake up again from the day, from the moment I open my eyes, I, I say I'm, I'm thankful and I have gratitude uh, and start with my grateful eight. But we wake up, oh, going to, you know, you know, hit the streets, hit the hit the treadmill, go to work day in, day out, Groundhog's Day. Because that's your thought process, right? That, that's that negative thought process that you're in. But in ordinary life, we realize that you have not seen this day. This is a new day, a new opportunity to begin again. The Buddha talked about, you know, beginning again each day, uh, a chance to reset and to move forward. So Maya Angelou is right. It really is a wonderful day if you start off with that thought process and, again, let those thoughts become your words. Use that as your mantra if you want. Uh, this is a wonderful day. I have never seen this one before. What is today going to bring? Do I dare to dream? Do I dare to explore? Do I dare to live? Eckhart Tolle, who I follow and been following uh, when I actually started my spiritual path well over a decade ago, um, Tolle was hard for me to understand at times because uh, he speaks in such depth and um wisdom that it's like you have to it's almost like if you've never if you've never seen the matrix before go watch the matrix and then think about the concept and then go watch the matrix again and then watch it again uh it's it's that kind of things where you have to kind of listen to it over and see it over and over again before it really starts to resonate with the with the true deep message is because it's so wisdom and enlightened that you're like it, you, it's hard to comprehend but Eckhart Tolle talked about gratitude as well and it is through gratitude for the present moment that the spiritual dimension of life opens up and again I really started to move my concept of the magic in the moment was based off Tolle's uh, A New Earth that he wrote talking about it is through gratitude for the present moment what you're here right now listening to my voice listening to the show look around you what are you doing as you listen to the show uh what's going on in your life this is having gratitude for that present moment and when you do that the spiritual dimensions if that's part of your belief um again you know rethink in three dimension but we know from vibration string theory uh, physics metaphysics uh we know that there are other vibrational um dimensions and when you move into that energy of gratitude for the present moment, the spiritual dimension of life opens up. And I really truly believe that is how I became the um, the medium that I am. You know, I took a lot of studies and learning, of course, and workshops, but actually getting into that gratitude and moving into the, uh, the moments of my life um, that I'm living my life, that the other dimensions did start to open up to allow me to connect with people that aren't seen, not heard, but very much a part of our life 
because they interact with our thoughts, our emotions, our um, skin. Uh, you know, we can feel the spirit world. Um, you know, it's more of a feeling versus actually hearing them after death communications. And I really, truly believe in my pathways, a lot of that was because I started to open up and have gratitude. And again, Deepak, if you follow Deepak Chopra, uh, another spiritual guru, he talks about from a gratitude standpoint that gratitude opens the door to power, the wisdom, the creativity of the universe. You open the door through your gratitude. So if you will, visualize a door, you know, visualize in your mind a door in your journey. And on that door, there's a big plaque that says gratitude. And if you open up that door of gratitude, like Deepak was talking about in that quote, you start tapping into power, wisdom, creativity, co-creation, inspiration, and even when I'm doing this show and I'm preparing for this show, I actually visualize a door of gratitude. It's kind of like Narnia. For those of you that know C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia, it's opening that closet of wonder. Yeah, to some, it looks like a closet with just a bunch of coats hanging in on it. But if you explore and you have gratitude and you go into that closet and you start to go to the back of the closet, moving those coats aside, who knows? You may open up a spiritual dimension that takes you to the land of Narnia where you are interacting with, you know, mystical creatures. Um, you know, so I've always been just fascinated with Narnia. Uh, that it was such a great story. And it's it really is the same way in your journey. If you just visualize it, I always say believe it, see it, achieve it, ask, believe, receive. And really great things do start to open up for your life. And as Dr. Wayne Dyer talked about, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at do start to change. So it's been awesome hanging out with you today. Thanks for listening to Inspired Living Radio. Um, I'll be back in two weeks for another episode. And until then, until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate, and we'll see you back for another episode of Inspired Living Radio. Have a great Thanksgiving, uh, everyone, and namaste.